Welcome to Brief Crypto. We review the talk and action around crypto and sum it up. Today is Thursday, September 7th, and today's video is for entertainment only. Looking at the markets on banterbubbles.com. Green day for crypto. Bitcoin is up 1.5%. Ethereum was up 0.87%. Avalanche is up a percent. Cardano's flat. XRP is pretty flat as well. It's up 0.32%. BNB is up 064 That's some of the large cap tokens. Some of the bigger green bubbles, Myota up 5.7%, Apecoin up 2.7%, Render up 6.5%, Thorchain up 2 Near Protocol up 2%. Um, some of the bigger green, or excuse me, red bubbles, uh, Pulse, I believe this is Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is down 2.3%, Tuncoin down 1.5%, Radix down 1.4%, but nice green day for crypto. Looking at the hour on banterbubbles.com, uh, definitely looking green for the hour as well. So we're going to start by looking at the daily on Bitcoin, and we're just going to look at the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the yearly. Um, should always zoom out when analyzing various in investments. And so we're going to do that today. Looking at the daily on Bitcoin, we've been in this uptrend since reaching the having three post peak low back on November 21st of 2020. 22 of $15,474 for Bitcoin. And so we've been in this nice uptrend with higher highs and higher lows. We did get pretty close to this to making a lower low right here around 248, 24,800. But we are moving up away from the 200 week exponential moving average now, making a move to the upside at $26,285 dollars for Bitcoin. So hopefully we will, we will not see a lower low in this uptrend. Looking at the weekly, and again, we always look at going, going back and look at the cycle. This is a logarithmic chart so that we can see it better. Uh, but we basically had 152 weeks of summer, then 58 weeks of winter where we come down. So this summer we have this nice uptrend up to the peak uh, after having one, having one peak, having one post peak low and then moving out of that low. This is relatively where we are now. If we take this 33 weeks back from the having event, same here, this is a relative spot. So we're in this summertime here in having two, go through having two, reach the having two high and then the having two post peak low. So again, 152 weeks of summer, nice up. And then a year, roughly a year of winter in this downtrend. So after the having two post peak low came up and hit uh, a peak, first peak, and then the second peak was the high for the having three at around 69,000, then dropped down again in a, a year and two weeks. So basically a year down to the having three post peak low. And now we're moving up 33 weeks away from the having event, which is expected to occur now on April 26th. 2024. And so looking at the past in that time frame, moving into the having, we had COVID here. So we did have a bit of a drop right there, but nice even move up to the peak going through the having and there's ups and downs, but definitely a nice uptrend all the way to the peak and the having two coming out of the having two post peak low, nice, still nice uptrend following this 200 day, simple moving average, uh, that COVID dropped down and almost hit that again. So the bottoms have been hitting really closely on that. We're sitting in that 200 day simple moving average right now. I believe we're a little bit, well, we are a little bit below it. 200 day simple moving average is at 27,682 and we're at 25,868. So we did just drop back under 26,000 for a Bitcoin. Well, this is a line chart. So it's high, low divided by two. So we're still at 26,191 right now. And so very consistent, uh, in terms of time frame, in the yearly drops, they've been, been basically somewhere between 80 and 90% each time. And so very consistent in this Bitcoin having cycle so far, looking at the monthly, and we look at a bunch of indicators on the monthly, uh, they tend to, uh, be the most predictive when, when we're looking at the monthly in terms of looking back at the past and again, on the monthly, very, very nice. We follow the fractals from having two and having three. We should move up something like this and maybe at the having be somewhere around 50,000, 50 to 55,000 for Bitcoin. 
and then move up a little steeper until we reach the more, the steepest part moving into the peak, which could be up around half a million dollars for Bitcoin. And so, um, it's been very, very consistent. I'm looking at this monthly. Also what these indicators tell us have been very consistent. Looking at the ultimate oscillator, right? Uh, came down under the 40 each time moved up through the having to a peak, same thing in three, and we're doing the same thing as having four. So ultimate oscillator tells a very good story. The relative strength index on the monthly, same thing under the 35. Hit right around the low is where we dipped under the 35 on the monthly on the relative strength index. And then nice move up to the peak through the having event. It's the having event to the peak, same thing in having three. And we're looking very similar uh, in this having four cycle. Um, maybe we'll look at one more, the MACD. In the MACD, we did get that MACD cross. And so we're looking very similar to the past right here in having three. And hard to see in the having two there, but same thing moving into the having two event, crossed over, did a MACD cross, just like we did in having three and now in having four as well. So MACD is looking very consistent as well. So looking at the monthly, looking very nice. I mean, every one of these indicators is telling the same story, the money flow index, the stochastic RSI, the Chaikin oscillator, percent price oscillator, all telling the same story about that. We're rhyming with past cycles in a fantastic way. Um, looking at the yearly, the yearly, uh, we basically, before the having in the having, we, uh, we have a green candle, uh, typically, and it, well, we have every time having one, having two, having three yearly candles have been good up and having three in the, ha in the year of the having event, 304%, having two, 126 and having one, 186 in the year following the having. So for us, 2025 in this having four cycle, having again, expected April 26th of 2024, currently in a green yearly candle, but the next candle after that in the having one was 5,372% and having two, it was, um, 1331% and in having three, it was 59%. Of course, we, and then, and then we have a, the year of down in each case before we hit the low and then come back up through the having. And so we're in that first year, uh, 2023 of green. And then we would expect to see another yearly green candle in the having four year of 2025 or excuse me, 2024 and then 2025 have another green yearly candle if we follow this cycle. So uh, zooming out and looking, looking like everything is rhyming and fitting the pattern very nicely. When we look at this is the 200 week uh, simple moving average that we're looking at here. We're just sitting at it right now. It's very close to close to the, well, it's at, uh, let's see what it's at. It's at 27,683 for the 200 week simple moving average. And uh, this is showing Bitcoin. I'm not sure why this is the index. So, but the Bitcoin price is at 26,351. Look at a news related to crypto on cryptopotato.com. FASB, the US Financial Accounting Services Board, passes long awaited fair value accounting for crypto. Thank you, Michael Saylor of Mike micro strategy, the U S Fin financial accounting services board, FASB has passed a un unanimous vote to dr drastically change the way crypto asset values are recorded on publicly traded companies, balance sheets. This is uh, great news for companies wanting to add Bitcoin to their balance sheets. Experts predict the chain change will make crypto more attractive to hold by exposing big investors to the upside potential of their ass assets. MicroStrategy's micro strategy, micro wish is granted. FASB's vote is a welcome change for MicroStrategy, one of the largest corporate holders of Bitcoin. The firm CEO has been a vocal advocate for fair value crypto accounting, claiming on Wednesday that it eliminates a major impediment to corporate adoption of Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. 
fair value accounting is coming to Bitcoin. This upgrade to, a, to FASB accounting rules eliminates a major impediment to corporate adoption of Bitcoin as a treasury asset. In this uh, tweet, I believe this is a tweet by Michael Saylor. Actually, that's a quote from an article. So some of the largest uh, holders of Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, of course, is in there. Have around 153,000 Bitcoin. At $26,000 Bitcoin price, that's about $4 billion. So some of the biggest holders are Coinbase at around $2 million, as stated by the CEO of Coinbase in, a, in an interview, I believe, with CNBC. It's $52 billion worth of, worth of uh, uh, Bitcoin in, in, in USD. Uh, Binance, 655,000 Bitcoin, that's $17 billion. Grayscale has $16.6 billion. Bitfinex, about $5 billion. U.S. government has about $4.6 billion. Uh, Block One has about $3.6 billion. OKEX, an exchange, has about three point one, and Robinhood has about $3.1 billion. According to the data that we could find, of course, this data could contain errors, and you should do your own research. But that's what we could find on large holders of Bitcoin. Further news on CryptoNewsFlash.com. Crypto analysts warn spot Bitcoin ETF approval. It send XRP price to $5, $10, and beyond. Crypto analysts have pointed out the massive opportunity presented by the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF, deeming it reckless not to aggressively accumulate. Experts believe that the SEC will approve all filed spot Bitcoin ETFs simultaneously as Grayscale asks the SEC to meet and discuss the way forward on the same. Despite the stubbornness of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, a spot Bitcoin ETF is considered inevitable. This will invite institutional investors and un unlock billions of dollars for the crypto market. This could easily usher in the next true bull market that propels crypto to new all-time highs. And so looking at some of those companies that have filed, I mean, we've had a bunch, we've had a lot of dates that have passed as far as the deadlines. But um, some of the ones we're keeping an eye on are BlackRock, iShares, Invesco, Fidelity, Wise Origin, Vanette, Grayscale, Wisdom Tree, Arc 21 Shares, Valkyrie, Invesco, Galaxy Digital, Bitwise, and several more as well. Further news on Cointelegraph.com: Bitcoin short-term holders capitulate as data highlights potential generational buying opportunity. And that's what we're seeing in a lot of this data, especially if you go back and look at this monthly, looking at past patterns and then all of these indicators uh, point to this gen idea of a generational buying opportunity as well. But as shown in the chart below, the 200 week simple moving average generally acts as a key support level during major uh, downtrends. And ARC suggests that any future bearish catalyst could see the Bitcoin price fall as low as 20,300 where its realized price currently resides. So if we look at that, the realized price is down around that 20,000, what would he say, 20,300 mark, and then the 200 uh, week simple moving average up here that we've talked about in chart we looked at earlier. And looking at further information in this article, despite the rather dismal short-term outlook for the crypto market, a more optimistic view of Bitcoin's dip below the 200 week Simple moving average would highlight the fact that dips below the realized price and the long-term moving averages presented cyclical buying opportunities. Investors who accumulated when the price dipped below both metrics in 2019, 2020, and early 2022 found themselves in deep profit within the next six months. And so analyst Ben Lilly recently alluded to a similar occurrence within the Bitcoin dominance metric, suggesting that Bitcoin's about to take the driver's seat again. And so if you look at that chart, you know, the Bitcoin dominance previously was going down and then heading up, um, heading down, then it had a big spike up in this relative. I'm not sure if this is in the right time frame for the having March Mar or April of 2019. So let's go back and look at April of 2019. April right in there. So yeah, fairly well. Let's see. Yeah. So not too far off of the low, not quite in the exact time frame, but pretty close pre having a little earlier in the, um, in the time frame as far as the post peak low goes, but pretty definitely in the summer time, how we define it. So going back to the article, um, after that dominance drop, then we got the big spike in dominance 
And that's what they're talking about in this article. Um, Bitcoin dominance, a measure of Bitcoin's market share of crypto based on market cap is what was being discussed in that article. So last thing, if you want to learn more about uh, Bitcoin ETFs coming, you can go to this uh, video. It's a great video, fairly long. Uh, guy goes into a lot of detail in his videos about a, about a topic. And so this is a great video on the bit. Bitcoin ETF coming. What uh, the Grayscale versus SEC? I can't read the rest of that um, lawsuit. I believe it says. Let's see. Well, let's go. Back. Can't see a Bitcoin ETF coming. What the Grayscale versus SEC lawsuit means. And so you can. We're going to leave a link to that below, and you can go down and watch that video. Video if you're interested in more about the ETFs coming and a lot of data related to that. So thank you for joining today's Brief Crypto. If you like today's video, please subscribe, hit the like button, the notification bell, and share it with others. Today's video is for entertainment and education purposes only. We are not financial advisors. You should always do your own investment research.